until we understand the anomaly well enough to predict its path, billions more lives will be at risk. Not on our watch. Uh, what kind of ride are fans going to be in for with season four? There's a, a, a threat that's very serious. There's also uh, action, adventure, humor, uh, love, care, hope, optimism. It's, uh, you know, just a, a lot of things uh, over the course of the season. How is Michael Burnham going to be challenged uh, in this new season? How are the stakes going to be raised for her? Oh, I, I think the stakes are raised for Burnham just as they're raised for everyone, right? Because of this big, huge threat, because of this anomaly. Um, uh, you know, Stamets reveals that um, in in one of the trailers that we've released that it's five light years across. So this is um, this is unfathomably dangerous and uh, and brand new. And so the uncertainty is cre is like this uh, pressure cooker. And so everybody is going to be going through it. No stone is left unturned with that. And for Burnham in this new role as captain. Um, having seen this woman grow and change and, and, and sort of like, um, uh, expand in a way that can now fit this chair, uh, you will see that there are new things to learn and there are still some of the same fights that need to be had. Um, which I think is, is, a, is a surprise to Burnham. Um, it's, it's almost about like, a the control or the illusion of it and, or, or access or, or thinking that, something is settled now and knowing that it's not, knowing that the fight just keeps going and, and, and it should. So there were a lot of ties to the existing Star Trek canon uh, with season two, but we've stepped away from that in season three and obviously season four. Uh, so to you both, uh, what's it been like to sort of extend and, and take the Star Trek canon down these uh, different avenues and paths? It's, it's been a lot of fun, actually. You know, as a, as a fan of Star Trek, I, I love that we've had some fresh snow to play in. Mm -hmm. um, I love that we've gotten to look at different species in, in new ways. Um, it's just, it's, it's been really, really cool to get to write canon uh, as we go. So it's been fun. Yeah, and I think having the connective tissue to the to, yeah. to the franchise, you know, it's like everything that we've seen thus far is 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 there. It's it's a part of our story. It's a, it's a part of our history. Um, and 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 in with these folks in this story, it's a part of their history. And so I love that. I love it too. I I, I love what uh, Michelle said about the fresh snow of it all, because you also still have everything that happened before it and honoring all that comes before you. That's right. What can you tell us more about the threats that the crew is going to face this season and, and how those threats maybe stack up against some of the other things that they've already faced in seasons one, two, and three? Uh, well, this season, what we do know from the trailer is that, uh, that it is this anomaly. We don't know anything about it at the start. Uh, we, we don't know what its impact is going to have, just that it will uh, have a significant impact. Uh, and that, um, and we do get the sense that it, it federation, non-federation, it affects us all equally, I think is, is even one of the lines from the trailer. Um, so, uh, I, you know, we can't get into more specifics than that, but, you know, certainly something of that um, size and something of that threat level uh, brings about a lot of uncertainty. That's one of the big themes that we're exploring this season is um, what does that mean to live in a world of uncertainty? What does that mean for uh, our, our characters as a family? What does it mean for them as individuals in relation to one another? Um, and I, I think it will test them all and, and help them grow in, in new ways, ultimately. My wife pointed out uh, that Michael is someone that has gone rogue in the past. And now that she's captain, how is she gonna adjust to those impulses in her character? That's a great question. I, I think what, what we found with Burnham um, is that, you know, these impulses, they came from a pure place in, in, in this sort of, in this yearning to, uh, to sustain life, um, this yearning to um, uh, satisfy the needs of the many, but also satisfy the needs of the few, if, if possible, or even in some instances, satisfy the needs of the one. Um, but I think those urges, what, what Burnham needed to learn is that uh, these things don't happen in a vacuum. These decisions can't be made in a vacuum. So even if you have the right intentions, even if you're coming from a pure place, you're coming from a, uh, a place of a leader, uh, and even better yet, a sacrificial leader, you still have to understand that you are just one of a whole and that everybody has to be able to speak to this and be involved, you know, in the same way. And so I love that 
uh, Burnham's urges uh, have grown from from that sort of um, uh, sadly from from a sort of self um, self fulfilling place to a um, to a collectively filling place or, or, or to a to a place that uh, services the whole and and so you will see these um, urges with Burnham for as long as you see Burnham, right? Because that um, that proactivity is a big part of, of my character as, as Burnham. And that, that sort of forward thinking, uh, realizing something ahead of everyone else and, and dealing with the um, kind of resistance that might come from that. But it's just that now, you know, Burnham as captain um, has learned how to factor that in. Um, in a way that is helpful and that doesn't hinder.